In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up the development environment required so that you can modify the BlueCube app. As this is a Windows machine, you can only use it to modify the Android version of the app. You need a Mac to do the iOS version, or you can use some online services, including those provided by Ionic, but I'll leave that as an exercise for you to explore if you're interested. So to do the install, we'll first start by going to the Bluetooth website and we'll go to the development environment page. Now this page lists all of the instructions of how to set up the environment that I'm going to use in this video. So if you're ever stuck, please come back to this web page and follow the instructions. I'm also going to cut out delays for install or download just to make this video go quicker. So to start with we need to install the Ionic platform which requires Node.js. So we'll go to the Node.js homepage and we'll download the latest version for Windows. Uh, version 4 is the version that's required. So we'll let that download. let it finish doing the install and we'll uh, actually just run this. Just gonna give it a moment to bring the installer up, there we go. Um, we'll accept the defaults and install. We'll allow it to modify the machine. And Node.js has now been successfully installed. So with that, we can close the installer, leave the node page, and back to the Bluetooth page. So we need to start by installing Cordova. To do that, uh, we need to start the command prompt. So you can go to the Windows, and then CMD, bring that up. Now, to install Cordova, it was just npm install minus g C-O-R-D-O-V-A. We'll, now this will download the Cordova um, code in the background and then it'll actually go through and install it for us. Okay, Cordova has now been installed. So the next thing we need to install is Ionic. Again, we use an npm command, so I'll just copy that one paste it in, hit enter, let this run. Just as like Cordova, it'll start by downloading items in the background. Once they're downloaded, it'll run a install. And Ionic has now been successfully installed. That took a little while, but it's now installed. So the next thing we need is XML2.js. We run the uh, same process we've uh, just run. Again, I'll copy the command, paste it in, and we'll run it. XML to JS has now been successfully installed. So with that, we now have all of the items we required for the Ionic part of the setup done. So we can scroll down, we'll skip the iOS support, and we'll do the Android install. So the Android support requires the Java Development Kit. Now this is a different version of Java than is typically installed on most computers. So we'll go to its website and scroll down. You need to accept the license condition. And I'm on a 64-bit version of Windows, so I'll select it and download the installer. Okay, that's finished downloading, so we'll now run it. Yep, we'll allow it to make changes to the machine. And next, the defaults are fine. We'll allow this to finish. The 
again, defaults are fine. And we've now successfully installed the Java Development Kit, so we can close the installer. Now, I'll actually close this and go back to the BlueCube website. There are a number of additional steps that we need to do to successfully set this up so that our Android environment can find the version of Java. So the best way to do it is we'll go, we need to set some environment variables. So we'll go start, type environment, and we'll edit the system environment variables. On the advanced tab, we want to click environment variable. Now, just with this, so what we need to do is new one called Java Home, so I'm just going to copy this. So we've got user variables or um, system variables. You could put it in either. I normally put this as a user variable for myself. So new, we'll paste in the Java home. And if you accepted the defaults, the value will be as uh, follows. So I'll just copy that, paste it in. And then we can click OK to set that. Then we click OK to set the environment variable and OK to close system properties. So the Java JDK is now installed. So now we need to install the Android Studio, which is the development IDE for Android devices from Google. So we'll go to its website. We'll click the download link. We'll accept the terms and conditions and click download. Android Studio is now finished downloading, so we need, can now click on Run to start the installer. Yep, we'll allow it to make changes to the machine. Next, the defaults are fine. Next, so Agree to licenses. We'll allow these to continue. Please take note of the Android SDK install location. We'll actually need to use this later. Next, the again, the defaults are fine, so we'll just leave them as they are. And we'll now install. And the installation has now successfully completed. It would have taken a little while as it downloaded and extracted various components, but we're now done. So we can click Next, and we can, uh, we'll actually untick the Start Android Studio because we need to make some other changes before we run it for the first time. So we'll do that and finish. Now, those changes are actually listed um, down here, but I've also spelled them out um, on the BlueCube page. So we can start by down here and we can type path and edit the system environment variables. Again, environment variables. Now path, which is the one we need to edit, so we'll click on that, we'll click at the end. And I've got all of the text, make sure you get the first semicolon that we need. Now, if you changed the install location, you'd need to update this as appropriate, but hopefully you can just copy and paste. I'm just going to make sure that there's no space at the end and that there was no space there. That's fine. We'll click OK, OK, and OK. So we're now done. Now, we also need to install some additional software development kits for the Android environment. So to start that, we can go back to the command prompt and type Android. Ah, sorry, what we need to do is quit the command prompt and start it again. Now we can try Android again. Uh, that's that path setting just taking into effect. So we'll just let this check the latest details. 
with the Google servers. Cool. Um, there's a few packages that need to be installed but the or updated, but the one we really care about is Android 5.1.1 and then the SDK platform. You could install the um, system images which are used for the emulator but Bluecube won't work with the emulator because it doesn't support Bluetooth so you can test the basic app but you can't actually communicate with the cube so we don't really need it. The other thing I'm just going to do to speed things up is that we don't need the Android TV or the Android Wear um, environment so I'm just going to untick those. And with that we can now install the packages. I'll just select one of these, accept the license, they should all go green and with that we'll click install. And all of the uh, packages that were required to be installed with the Android SDK have now finished. And we should be able to just double check. Yep, there's the SDK for the 5.1.1. So with that in mind, we can now uh, quit. Yes, and that is the end of the install that's required for setting up the development environment. The next video in this tutorial setting, uh, tutorial series will show you how to build and deploy the app to your Android mobile device. Thank you for watching.